right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's full 75, by the way. Full 75. 75. You're almost there. 75. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, a little bit about myself up here. I've uh, actually started turning sometime in the 90s. And uh, I, I went out and bought a lathe. I, I remember back in junior high, and uh, it's just something that kind of stuck with me. Uh, somewhere around 2000, I had a class with, at Aramont uh, with Alan Lacer, and then uh, and, and sitting down with Alan, and one of his big things up there, he said, Ray, he said, if, if you want to be a good turner, he said, you got to be around turners. And, and, and he, he was just spot on. Uh, so sometime in 2000, right in that area, I got with Greg, the Detroit Area Wood Turners. And we were at the other place then, and uh, it's just kind of kind of snowballed. And uh, with Russ Fairfield on, a, on the internet up there, and uh, he kind of explained what it was, and, and it and it just worked. It seems it makes things so much simpler. And uh, in a lathe, there people, there is nothing to turning. It is so simple. I can take anybody. You get my shop, and you give me 15 minutes, and I guarantee you, you will be, be able to go home and turn a lathe, or turn a bowl, and turn it successfully. Just absolutely. I've, just, I've had most of you people in here, and, and you, you can do it, you know. And, and the thing is, with this club, see, we're not trying to make money. We're just, we want to make you turn. We want, I, I want you, I want everybody in here to be a better turner than me, and I'm really sincere about that. <coughs> and most of you are. <laughs> so, Okay. So fine. Well, the first thing what we need for turning is you need good posture. You don't want to be bent over. So once we got the good posture, we know that. Now we want the 45, 45, 45. What I want you to do is I want you to hold the tool at a 45 degree angle. Okay? It's just just that. That's all you got to remember. It's these three things, and you can go home and turn. You're going to stand at 45 degrees to the lathe. Okay? So you stand at 45, you're going to turn your tool at 45 degrees, and you're going to find a sweet spot. When you're turning, you never use your arms. I see guys turning, and all of a sudden the tool goes flying, or uh, the, the project you got to catch. Always use your body. You're using your body. You're coming around, you, you, you're making your turns. You don't use your arms. You're using your body, you've got all kinds of control. <laughs> but fast is always better. You'll get a better cut, and don't go. Okay. So now, we're starting to turn, and uh, I've got my tool rest set. Something too, any time that you move your tool rest, you always turn the machine off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so we're, we're up here. Is that, good? Is that okay? You're yeah. good. All right. We've got good posture, right? We're standing straight up. We've got good posture. It's just a piece of cake. We're holding the tool yeah. at 45 degrees, okay? The good posture, we stand at 45 degrees. We're holding this at 45 degrees. Now, we want to find a sweet spot. So, see how simple that is? If I was using my hands, it would be a different story. You get them two down, the push and the pull, you've got it made. It's just a piece of cake. So we're doing the pull cut right now. Yeah, we're doing that. We're, we're moving our body. And it, it just makes sense. Thanks. <laughs> and you know he did. <laughs> I didn't know that was going there. It's just, just like you're dancing with your wife. Where's she at? You just <laughs> nice and easy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just a plain 
is I, uh, I always do the inside first. I do this part, then I do the inside, and I finish it. I even put my finish on here, then I do the, then I, then I finish the back. I let the, this dictate what this is going to be. It, uh, it's, it's a preference, it's just the way I do it. So. And now we're going to do the push cut. I call this a hero's cut. You would to go this way. We've got this set up here. I see your bevel. I didn't really when we were going we were cutting this way, we were riding the bottom bottom part of this bevel. And you always ride the bevel. You'll be able to see the bevel uh, easier this way. But I've got this, it's basically right even. I'm going in. Does that show the bevel? You know that's riding on the devil right here? You can't get in trouble till you put the point <coughs> in. Now we're going to stand right here and we're going to make a line. Not like that. What we're going to do is ride on the inside of this bowl, we're going to ride the bevel. We're going to go in at just about 45 degrees and we're going to, we're going to turn the tool and the tool is going to end up right in the center. Okay? So we're riding the bevel. And we're turning. And we're turning. Now sometimes, this is turning, say, at 1,500 RPMs. <coughs> Out here, it's probably maybe 3,000. I'm just using that as an example. So the farther you get in, the harder it is. You, 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 you find yourself wanting to start here, and then you're going to come back. Now we're going to come back here. You still got that 45, 45. Right in the bevel. Got the bevel on there. Is that showing on the... On the oh, yeah. If it's nothing, you can... It's just... Yeah. God, I am so into simple. You're doing push cut right? Yes. Advantages or disadvantages of pros and cons against doing, say, a full cut instead? You can do a full cut. I don't teach it okay. to start out with because it's too complicated. The new turner is just not going to get it and it's going to fly <laughs> off. And, and then, you know, I've, what happens is the first couple times a person turns, if he screws up, he says, The heck with this crap, I'll do something else. I'll make benches or something, you know. I, I don't want you once. And uh, you can kind of almost lean right over and, and keep doing this with the, the tool in there. But you're going to get a spot right here where you can't use, you can't have the tool into your stomach. But you still got to have the 45 degrees. So what you do, you ride your double right here, okay? You lock your arms. And you're doing the same thing. You're using your body when you turn. So you lock your arms right here and you come around. You're using your body. You use your, see, I got my arms locked. And see, I'm moving my body. Is that right? There's another alternative too, which is to move the head down to the end of the leg where you can stand patient. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you can. I, I just this this just works. You move it down here, and, and yeah, exactly. Any way you want. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm not doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we got 
thicker right here. Go back in. We're turning right in. You see I turn that right, right into the thinner. To that, you know, uh, I use my calipers. These right here, and I just <laughs> it works for me. So okay. Something too, you always want that tool rest in close. Close is always better. People get paid for this. <laughs> How am I doing, Jack? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Keeping the shaving zone. <laughs> See, but there, there, just, just turn, I, it, it is simple. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, I, I, 15 minutes with me, I'll show you how to do a wood turner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. When you get down to that point where we're working on, how do you find the easiest to determine the length, the width of that bowl at the bottom? Uh, with, uh, you could use calipers or... Well, I mean, if it's already on here like this and you're, you're getting kind of close... And well, I, I, I get it all the way up to about right here. That's where I go in. Then I would come back to this side and form my bowl. The bowl's not going to be like this. Okay, so let, me, let me run it back and I'll get Sometimes you get in trouble doing it. I just wonder how you do it. Yep. That's not actually all that. That's kind of pretty. <laughs> Something, too, when you... Uh, just being so that puppy make a small platter. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, <laughs> uh, see how I'm riding that bevel? I got my arms locked. right now put yeah, after I put the, the sealer on there and uh, and then then pick it up. That's why I tell people I want I'd like you to make a hundred bowls when you get done and and, and uh, after I've showed you this and what the hundred bowls is gonna do, it's gonna give you some muscle control, muscle memory, and pretty soon uh, you're not gonna have to think about it. Well race that I stand it this way and, and I stand it up hold it to forty five and and, and that's so that when you get home, see a lot of people, you show something like this right here, but by the time they get over here, they've already forgot it. So what I want, I want that 45, 45, 45. I want you to remember that. And, and trust me, it just works. It's just a, just a fantastic thing. So let me get the back a little bit. Hey, Ray. Yes, sir. Let's say that you had just rechucked that. It's, it's sat around for, uh, you know, six months. Yeah. What's the best way when you're going in to finish it to keep those marks out? And probably pull it up to the camera. Up to the camera. Up to the camera. Curl check to the camera up here. Right up here. You have to raise it up. There you go. You got it. 
Yeah, yeah. See that devil, devil? Uh, actually, I would have more. I would actually you only need like a uh, a couple thirty seconds of an inch for a devil, but the new turners aren't ready for that. So what I do by doing this, I I, I grind this off right here, like like this angle, and I leave probably about an eighth of an inch right here for my devil. Now as I'm going through the bowl, I, I this see this is what's doing all the damage. Let me show you better on this one. When you're when you're going through, you this part is is this part is digging in to the uh, to the bowl. And when you get done, you you look at it and gosh, it looks like man, this is pretty good. But you, you've already damaged the wood. So what you're doing now when you start sanding, you uh, all of a sudden you start looking at it, and I got two bumps in here. You got in grain, you got side grain, and you didn't have a good cut there. And the more you sand, the worse it gets. Everything just works, and it, as you guys turned, uh, it, it's all about shapes. We had uh, remember Don Derry. Don is, is just a. How am I doing, Albert? Perfect, man. The way you taught me. <laughs> Okay, I, what I would probably do with this, let me take it back just a little bit more. Right here. Yeah, we're just kind of waltzing around here. And just kind of sneak up on it. I mean, you just, just you get it up here. Then you do the Don Derry thing. You look for the high spots. Most spots take care of themselves. Got the high spots. I got a high spot right there, so I'll take care of that. I got another high spot there. And I got a high spot here. So I'm going to come up here and just take them off. Isn't that cool? Yep. Just remember that. That's worth the price of addition right there. Mm -hmm. Always get the high spots off and the rest of it will take care of themselves. Done. And I'm getting ready to put my final turn on it. I get it in there. I finish this. I get this finished. The outside, I, I what I try to do on all my bowls is... Uh, Okay, I always, when I get the bowl like this, I always want to cut this, this edge going towards the outside. Okay? And the reason I do that is, uh, let me see here. Is when this bowl is done, I would finish this and then I'd finish the back. Now I'm finishing this. See how I got that side kind of run down on this side on an angle? What I want is I want, when this is sitting on a coffee table over here, it, you're, if, if you got it flat or turned this way, you're not gonna you're gonna catch this grain, but if it's if it's shaped down this way, at about three quarters of an inch all the way, right. and then I would I would have parted this off. I would have left uh, about seven sixteenths or three eighths of an inch on this part. You really don't need a lot to hold it. And then once and, and when you take this, put this back on, it's gonna have some hoopty doos in there. It's gonna be warped big time. And uh, put it back on the lathe, return it. And like I say, I like doing this part first. I finish this. Then I kind of cheat. I've got uh, I've got a vacuum chuck with, to which I just love. I keep a center back here, and I turn that around, put it on the vacuum chuck, and zip, and I am done. Uh, I did a show at Performance Tools, and in one week, I finished refinished 25 bowls in a week. I refinished 25 pins, and I replaced 15 <coughs> bottle stoppers all in a week. And just just bam, bam, bam. It's a production line. I'm not stopping them. Take this guy. Oh man, that looks great. Can I? No, I'm sitting <laughs> down for a while there, so you aren't working all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I do. You know, 
boy, if I could do my time a little better, I could have doubled that probably. Yeah. <laughs>